Welcome to Lesson 1 of Java Video Tutorials. I am your host, Trevor Gao, from Houston, Texas. We're going to learn Java the easy way, with videos instead of reading books. I learned PHP the same way, and I thought I'd give back by creating Java Video Tutorials. So, we're going to start out with Lesson 1 from the very basics, which starts with downloading the SDK and your IDE, and we're going to write the Hello World application. So uh, just a quick disclaimer, this tutorial with all my others can be found at www.javavideotoots.com and um, if you have any questions you can just send me an email from that website. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, start off. So the first thing we're going to do is open up your uh, web browser so we can go download these applications real quickly. So let me get this in your window real fast. Okay. And the first place we're going to go to is www.java, sorry, java.sun.com. No www. Okay, and this is uh, Sun Microsystems Java website. You can download the SDK and the documentation and everything else you need for Java right here. Uh, so let's go to this Downloads tab and click on Java SE and we want the JDK 6 update 3 so if you're watching this tutorial at a later time you might have something else here but you want JDK something uh, you know like maybe it'll be 7 or 8 uh, in the future uh, you don't want any of this other junk down here no net beans or whatever uh, but you it's probably going to be the first one here JDK 6 update 3 so click download and then on this page, uh, first you're going to need to accept the license agreement, so just click the radio button. And you want to download the online installation. Uh, unless you're going to transfer your executable install file to another computer without an internet connection, you want to use the online installation. So I'm going to click that. And uh, you're just going to save the file and then open it and just run the installer like any other program. Uh, it's going to actually install two different things. It's going to install the SDK and the JRE. The JRE is the Java Runtime Environment, and that's the latest uh, Java uh, in runtime environment uh, that can be used to run the applications that you create. The SDK is all the tools you need to compile your programs and uh, to actually develop your applications. So it's going to install two things when you run this installer and uh, just come uh, pause the video for now go ahead and install that and then come back when you're finished so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel and I'm assuming now that you have the JDK 6 installed fully so our next destination is www.drjava.org okay and this is the website that hosts my favorite Java IDE. It's uh, very plain Jane and simple, uh, but it's also customizable. And it has this little thing called the interactions window. And uh, we'll get more into that later. But for now, uh, just go ahead and click uh, download Windows app uh, if you're running Windows or download whichever version you need to. And uh, it'll take you to a sourceforge.net and then uh, you can just save the file. Now since uh, Dr. Java is written in Java itself, uh, you don't actually need to install the program. Uh, so you'll just be able to open this exe file straight up after you download it. And uh, once you do that, you will be ready to start coding in Java. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel and now I'm assuming you have the JDK 6 installed and you've also downloaded Dr. Java. So I'm going to go ahead and close my web browser and I have Dr. Java right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Okay, so let me resize this in your window. And right now my screen probably looks a little different from yours if you've opened up Dr. Java as well. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to get to this screen. Uh, so first of all, let's edit preferences, and I'll just show you how to change their change your colors if you want to. Some people prefer the traditional white background and
black text uh, as a, for their uh, coding window, but I'm you know a little different, I guess, and I like a black background here and white text. So you can just see um, if I go to Edit and then Preferences, then uh, go down to uh, Colors here, you can see all the uh, colors that I use. And if you want, you can match mine or create your own, or you can use the default, uh, whichever suits you better. So if you want to pause the video and you know figure out what my colors are, uh, you can do that. I also have my font uh, set to Courier New. It's mono. It's a mono-spaced font, so uh, it's easy to line up characters and all that good stuff. Uh, if you go down here to Miscellaneous, you can uh, set a few things like indent level. Uh, I think the default is two, but I have mine set to four. And uh, there's one more thing, um, and right here, uh, show unchecked warnings. I like to uncheck that because uh, we don't care about unchecked warnings. So when you have all those settings uh, or preferences set the way you like, go ahead and click OK. And uh, now you should have a window sort of similar to this. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go over what this, uh, what these three different sections of the program mean. This is this here is your main coding window, so this is where you'll be typing all of your code and writing all of your programs. Over here on the left hand side is your uh, file manager, and all it is is a list of open files that you have uh, that you're working with and you can just quickly switch in between multiple files. Of course you can resize these uh, sections as much as you want. Down here we have uh, three different tabs. We have compiler output, console, and interactions. Compiler output is going to be uh, just that. It's going to tell you what your errors are in your program, if there are any, or if your uh, if your program compiles successfully, it'll tell you. Um, if you have any errors, it'll tell you what line they're on, etc., etc. Console, I don't really use this one that much, but basically it's just the output of a program that you run from inside Docker Java. And the interactions window, I use quite a lot. And you can actually, uh, we're going to do a few lessons that are just using the interactions window. And the reason the interactions window is cool is because you can run Java commands and it will always print out the returned value. So if I said 5 plus 5 and hit enter, it'll return 10. So I can run any kind of Java code from the interactions window. I can also run Java programs from the interactions window. So this is my preferred uh, method, method than using the console. So uh, we'll be using this a lot and compiler output a lot. Uh, up here at the top, you just have a few buttons, new, open, save, close, cut, copy, paste, self-explanatory. Uh, you have find. Uh, this will open up your find and replace with. Uh, that comes in handy sometimes. Uh, compile. This will compile and save your source code. Reset will actually reset the interactions window. So let me click reset here. And you see that disappears and I don't use these three very often so let's just get right into it uh, we need to write a hello world application so let's go ahead and start I'm gonna I'm in a new file I'm gonna go ahead and save it so I'll click save or file save as and I'm gonna go ahead and make a new folder for you guys because you guys are special so I'll say Java video toots okay and I'll open that and I'm going to create this file and call it hello.java. Click Save. Okay, now I'm going to type public class hello. Okay, here's what I've done I've created a statement that says public class hello. Hello is the name of my class. Uh, this keyword class means that. I am defining a class. Public is basically access uh, modifiers. So public means everybody in the world can access this class hello. Uh, right now you don't need to know a lot about that. We'll get 
into this in a lot more detail in future lessons. Um, so let's just go on from there. A class, uh, we'll learn what a class is in I believe lesson 5. So uh, everything or 98% 90, of your code or 99% of your code is probably going to be in some type of class. So uh, let's go ahead and create a main method. So that looks like this. Public static void main string open close bracket args. Okay. And I have my next set of braces here. So public is another access modifier. Uh, it means everybody can access this method. And static and void, uh, we'll get into those later, so just know that they're there for now. And main, this is uh, this probably should be a keyword uh, because it is the entry point to all Java programs is the main method. So when you run a Java program first thing it does is it looks for this main method and a main method has to have this exact uh, uh, footprint if you will uh, except for the args. You can name this anything you want. I usually call it args. So this basically reads public static void main open parentheses string uh, open bracket, close bracket, which means array, and then args, close parentheses. And then since your whole program or uh, your main method is going to go inside these braces, uh, we open and then close. Same thing with the class. So everything goes inside the class and then the program uh, or the main method goes inside the open and close braces. So now we need a statement that's going to say print out the word words hello world. So that looks like this. System dot out dot print line hello world. Okay. So we have system and notice that system is capitalized as well as hello. Uh, since since I capitalized hello uh, that means that it's probably a class and obviously here it is a class. Sorry. This is a class hello Classes are always capitalized. It's convention. It's not required, but do it anyway. So system, you can see this is a class because it's capitalized. I did not write the system class. Uh, the nice people at Java uh, Sun Microsystems wrote the system class for me, and it's um, all it's all it's in the Java API. I can just use it, and uh, we can just you know uh, that that's where I find the print line method. Actually, um, inside of system, there's a variable called out, and it's an output stream, and then print line is a method inside of an output stream object, but we'll get into that a lot later. But you'll probably remember this uh, pretty well after a while, that system.out.println is your code to print out a line of text. So here we go, system.out.println, hello world, uh, make sure you have your parentheses and your quotation marks. Your quotation marks are going to denote a string. So if we take those away, uh, you'll see that <clears throat> the colors change and it's now thinks that this is a class and this is a class and it doesn't know what to do with those exclamation points. So that'll cause errors. We need to have quotation marks. So that's a string. Uh, then we need a close parentheses and then a semicolon. The semicolon is going to terminate a single statement. Uh, you notice we don't have semicolons here because uh, they have these braces. Um, and same thing with public static void main. We have the braces. They're not single statements. They're code blocks. But a single statement like system.out.println is going to use a semicolon. So uh, that's that. Let's go ahead and compile this. And uh, on yours, it might ask you if you want to save the file. Yes, you do. And you probably want to click the checkbox that says uh, always save a file when compiling. So right here it says compilation completed. And we can go over here to the interactions window. And to run a, to run a program that's open, uh, all you have to do is type Java in the lowercase and then the name of your class. So Java and then capitalize hello, press enter, and boom, hello world, and we're done. So there, there's your hello world application. Uh, you might want to try a few more things with it, like uh, 
let's add another line that says, you know, hello world, I am learning Java. Okay, and then we can compile that again. Don't forget to compile it again because uh, it'll need, every time you make a modification to your code, you have to recompile. So let's go ahead and rerun that. Uh, if you just push the up arrow key, it'll do the last um, command. So I just push the up arrow key and it goes Java hello. If I push up arrow key again, it'll go back to 5 plus 5. So I can go up and down. So Java hello. And you can see it printed two lines there. Uh, let's say I had an error. Let's say I accidentally typed print 1 in instead of print line. Uh, if I go to compile here, it's going to say there's an error found, and it says Java line 5, so I have, um, it's on line 5, obviously, and it says it cannot find symbol. Uh, this is, they refer to this as a symbol, uh, the method name, print line. So uh, that usually means I mistyped it or it's not there, or whatever the case may be, but if I change it to LN, of course, it will now compile. So uh, that should conclude our first lesson. Our next lesson is going to be in the interactions window exclusively, and it's just going to be on math. So we're going to learn how to deal with numbers in Java. So I'll see you next time, and thank you for watching.